Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the visualization tools session. Uh, this is Sitar Kortik from Fraun of our IPA. And uh, I will be hosting this session. Uh, visualization is an important tool for robotics development. And in this session, we will hear about new tools in ROS from four speakers. Uh, you can ask your questions under live discussion questions tab. And you can also attend polls there. At the end of this session, there will be a questions and discussion session for about 15 minutes. So I introduce the first speaker, Rafael Luque, from Andalusia Foundation for Aerospace Development. Uh, he will be presenting uh, that laser projector. OK, thank you very much. Um, first of all, um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rafael Luque, and I am a research and development engineer in the Advanced Center for Aerospace Technologies in Seville. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the project, uh, set the laser projector as part of the visualization tools topic of the Ross Industrial Conference. For this presentation, I have divided the content into the following section. Uh, in first place, I will start talking about the motivation of the project and following with the with the employed hardware, uh, the, the software architecture, the outcomes, and the available resources, the project final milestone, and I will end talk uh, saying some acknowledgement. Mm, I will I would like to start talking about augmented reality. That is um, a technology that combines the real um, and virtual world providing an interactive experience capable of answer to user inputs in real time. The greater the amount of information, the of amount of simulated information is represented, the closer is this technology to the virtual world and the farther it is from the real world. As you can see in the picture on this slide, the technology is widely used in several applications uh, from education to medicine, tourism, manufacturing, um, marketing, or entertainment. Uh, augmented reality is also a tool closely related to Industry 4.0, uh, representing one of the key technology for the digitalization in the search for, for the factory of the future. In these same images, we can appreciate the different types of augmented reality technologies. On the one hand, we can, we can find the, the system based on the screen at the top of the slide, such as tablet or OLED glasses. And in the other hand, there are the system based on traditional projection and laser projection. All this applicability um, translate in a growing forecast uh, in the augmented reality market, as we can see in the graphic below. Specifically, reports indicate a growth from $4 billion in 2017 to $60 billion in 2023. Um, some of the sectors that are expected to obtain a higher market size uh, are video games, healthcare, or engineering. In fact, in the research center, and focus on aerospace uh, sector, several projects based on these technology in augmented reality technology have been carried out. Example is a project based on uh, HoloLens glasses, where the information uh, is shown in real time and over the, over the transparent screen directly. 
other, other example of project is um, is based on natural light um, to assist the, in the in the placement of identification levels on the on the pipes. Um, in this line, uh, more research in, are being conducted in this field currently. An example of this is an interactive application that make use of the set laser projector stack. In this application, the projector um, detects the, the position of the worker's globe in order to optimize an, an assembly process. All these augmented reality technologies I have previously mentioned have a specific future that make them more appropriate depending on the application. For example, for video see-through system, it, it, um, a, a, it's a, it is a better option to, for, for remote application. But in, in the case of laser projection, this technology provides an excellent precision uh, around a few millimeter per meter. In, it also present a remarkable contrast in under natural light. And additionally, the projections show directly over the working surface, leaving the, the operator's hands free um, for, for the execution of other tasks. Some, The, the, all these advantages of the laser projection technology uh, have uh, turned this technology into a extended tool for industrial, for numerous industrial sectors, such as in material alignment in aircraft. In the case, in this case, laser lines can be had to basically inspect if pieces or assemblies are in the correct position. Uh, also in uh, automotive production, laser projector are used to position the, as, the assembly the assembly elements such as fastener or strut. And continuing with a uh, raw industry, mm, laser light is ideally sweet for application in which the working material has to be manually aligned with milling paths or, or drain points. And in that place, the, the logistics sector has also used the laser projector for positioning warehouse worker, for assisting warehouse workers in locating product or fulfilling orders. Specifically for the for the laser projector device used in the execution of the Set, a, set a laser projector project. Um, the, the model we have used is the set LP1 model of the set laser company. Set projector is designed to guide human operator tasks um, in industrial manufacturing processes in a reliable and, and, and a safe way, attending to the, to the safety standard for laser, for, for laser device. And another feature that made us uh, choose this projector is that it provides uh, communication via Ethernet. Uh, so it allows the sending of operation commands and the, and the access to stored information. Finally, other important uh, detail that, that it was taken into account when we choose the, the laser projector was the maximum projection area since we are dedicated to the aircraft sector, we usually work with large, uh, with large aeronautical parts. So it's an important characteristic for us. Going into the details of the software, the main goal of the, of the project is to develop a ROS stack um, that enables the communication, the control, and the integration of the of the set LP1 laser projector, turning it into a, a fully compatible device 
in within the ROS framework. Mm, this stack this stack will allow the ROS user to operate the device and and ease the development of more advanced uh, application based on augmented reality. Mm, in this slide, uh, it is uh, the software architecture. It is represented with the different package that compose the complete stack, and each one of them uh, have its own function. In, in the one hand, the set laser set LP1 package um, is the responsible of the interface for the communication for and control of the projector by providing a ROS API that exposes the functionalities, the possible functionalities um, by, a, by a topics and services. On the other hand, for the set laser messages package includes, <clears throat> sorry, uh, include the description of the messages and uh, the declaration of the messages and the description of the services from this this ROX API. And on its part, the set laser bits um, supply a visualizer that displayed the laser projection of the user defined uh, element and also locates the origin axis of the reference systems. For this purpose, the package make, make use of the standard visualization ROS messages and the TF ROS package. This tool, this tool helps the user to tight the position, increase the detail of the, of the projection, or pre-check the final result before, before deployment. And finally, the satellite SOG provides a graphical interface that improves the user interaction with this ROS API um, supplied by the, all the satellite projector stack and avoiding the, the operator needs to interact directly with the, with the console. In this slide, you can see an example of the overall vision of the different packages working together. In, this, uh, in the top left corner, we can see the graphical user interface uses to define the, the reference system and the projection elements, and which is now showing the, the current connection state of the device. That we can see it is now connected. On the other hand, in the right side of the slide, uh, <clears throat> the projection element uh, defined, defined by the user in, in this case, a circle, uh, a line, or a text string uh, are represented at the visualizer. The position of the origin axis um, of the active reference system are also displayed at this visualizer. And finally, in the bottom left corner, we can see the same defined projection element now projected by the by the device in the real in the real surf surface. However, the main the main problem that Industry 4.0 face to implement augmented reality is also, is usually related to the cost of the of the technology. Many applications running with uh, OLED glasses or tablet require lar large implementation for effort making the related investment inaccessible for small and medium enterprises. Making the use of a laser, of a laser projection system and a, a wrapper package like the developed here, many simple, many simple powerful applications can be deployed in order to widely improve numerous uh, production processes and in greatly decreasing the implementation effort. Moreover, um, the successful results achieved will get the attention of other manufacturers, encourage them to rossify the, their devices as well. Finally, the satellite projector also contributes to the ROS industrial community uh, growth and boost, the, and boost a new field of industrial application as it is the augmented reality. reality.
and a more detailed and, and individual description of the previous package and is available at the corresponding Ross wiki pages for any user who wants to, to make use of the stack. And also, moreover, the, the entire uh, source code of the satellite projector stack is open source in, the, in a GitHub repository and that you can find in, the, in that link. So the, the, final, the final milestone for, of this project will be accomplished uh, by the end of March, 2021. In this milestone, new functionality will be added as well as the those wiki pages, pages will be updated with the new functionalities. And also at this milestone, we plan to, we want to release the ROS stack uh, in both in ROS Melodic and other ROS distribution as a noetic. To, to conclude the, the presentation, I would like to give the thanks to the consortium of ROS in European Horizon 20 and 20 project for funding part of this project. Uh, within the third of call for focus on technical project. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, I will be it will be a pleasure to answer them in the question and answer session. Yeah, thanks, uh, Rafael, for the interesting uh, project that you introduced. Um, so, I would like to. Uh, call the second speaker, Darko Lukic from Cyberbotics. He will be presenting ROS2 for the EPAC2 robot. Um, thank you. Um, hello, um, I'm robotics software engineer at Cyberbotics. And in this presentation, I am going to show ROS2 driver for EPAC robot, and also improvements that we did uh, to VBOT's ROS2 interface in scope of this project. So VBOT's is fully featured robot simulator. It went open source. Uh, uh, Dark, I think we don't see your presentation. Can you please oh, sorry, sorry, share sorry, sorry. it? Okay. We see now? Yes, now it's fine. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so VBOTS went open source in December 2018. And since then, it's uh, quickly gaining um, popularity, popularity among roboticists. Um, it has a powerful world and robot editor, meaning that you can edit um, uh, your robot models and your world inside of VBOTS itself. But you can also import um, uh, models from the Blender, Colada, URDF, and so on. Um, it has um, a database of high quality robot models and worlds that you can use in your simulations and to produce high fidelity simulations. You, you can um, write your robot controller in like six different programming languages. Uh, it is also deterministic, meaning that you can expect the same output in each run. And it's uh, efficient, especially in terms of, so, uh, terms of CP usage. So, but some challenges that uh, some VBOTS users experience is that it's not very easy to port uh, uh, controller written for the simulation uh, to the physical robot. And so we discovered, we identified ROS2 as the perfect candidate to solve this problem. So the first step uh, uh, would be to create example, uh, how to transfer a controller from the physical world, from the simulation uh, to the physical robot. And we took EPAC uh, to robot as an example. 
EPOC2 is a small differential wheel robot that is mainly used for research and education. It is equipped with various sensors and it has a Raspberry Pi, meaning that we can put a ROST2 ROST on it. So our goal is to first is first to write ROS2 driver for uh, VBOT simulated robot, EPAC robot. And in order to do that, we created a, a translation layer that automatically creates ROS2 interface from a robot model. So you put robot model and um, a ROS2 interface will be automatically created. And the second feature is that VBOT now generates your dev from the robot model and your dev is later used uh, to generate uh, transform messages to publish transforms and to visualize the robot inside Arvis. The next step was to create a ROS2 driver for the uh, physical robot. And we made sure that the ROS2 interface for the physical robot is the same as the ROS2 interface uh, for VBOT's EPAC robot. And in the screen, you can see the, uh, the most important topics and uh, topics types. Uh, here we faced many challenges. Um, like it was quite hard to put um, a ROS2 on um, um, old ARM architecture. Uh, there was a challenge with uh, Raspberry Pi performance uh, with um, low camera frame rate and so on. But we managed to overcome those challenges and we managed to make um, a ROS2 driver for EPAC works fine. So the next step was to create, um, to do some kind of benchmark and to verify if whether our ROS2 uh, interface is properly implemented and, and whether the our simulation works fine. Um, so first we created a mapping mapping controller. So here you can see the mapping uh, ROS2 node that, that maps environment. And we also created uh, integrated the navigation to uh, ROS2 package. So we can do benchmark on navigation. And here is the mapping result. So in the picture in the right, you can see uh, uh, the map produced by a physical robot and the simulated robot. And you can see that the maps are very similar. And what is interesting here is that errors that uh, in a mapping made by physical robot are very similar to errors made in, made by robot in simulation. That proves that uh, VBOT simulation provides high fidelity results. Uh, that uh, our robot model is well well, well calibrated, and that our ROS2 interface is um, is properly generated. So the similar benchmark we did for navigation. And uh, here we achieved very similar results, uh, showing that, again, that um, our ROS2 interface works fine. So if you remember in the, before, I mentioned that we created um, a translation layer that automatically creates ROS2 interface uh, from VBOT's uh, robot models. And with um, um, benchmarks that I just show. Um, it uh, proves that our ROS2 interface is properly created. So uh, we managed to use that translation layer to create more examples, to create uh, ROS2 drivers for more robots. Um, and we created an um, example for TurtleBot, for Tiago, Unversal Robot, and Kepra4. Our goal is to create even more examples for more robots. And this is uh, what we will be busy in next few months. Um, here you can see the video that roughly summarizes, summarizes what we did. So, 
So this is EPAC robot in simulation, in VBOT simulation. And this is um, the same robot in the physical world. So here we want to show uh, mapping performance of simulated robot and the physical robot. Uh, here you can see the physical robot mapping the environment. And the results that I showed before. Again, the navigation. And here, since we created um, a ROS2 translation layer, we are able to uh, easily create ROS2 drivers for uh, different robots uh, from VBOT database. Here you can see Capra for uh, doing navigation. Um, now we want to use uh, TurtleBot, which is popular robot uh, among ROS2 users. And we use the standard TurtleBot package to perform mapping. And this example shows that um, our UDF converter works fine. So here we just visualize uh, transforms. Okay, and you can find uh, all everything on GitHub, everything open source, everything is tested with uh, industrial CI, ROS industrial CI and you can contact us if you have any further questions. Yes, uh, thanks Darko for the presentation and uh, mm -hmm. nice demonstrations. Uh, so the third speaker is uh, Levante Tamas from Technical University of Cluj, uh, Napoca. Uh, he will be presenting robot state visualization with AR. Okay, now it's better. So thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Levante Tomas. I'm from Technical University of Cluj-Napoca. And together with my colleagues from the Next Generation Interfaces Interactive Systems, NGI, we uh, made this ROS to IR package within uh, the ROSIN project. So here is the outline of the presentation. First, I will uh, show some details regarding the motivation why we uh, have uh, this uh, topic. Then uh, I will show the main idea how we develop this uh, package. Uh, I will show also the components that we used. And finally, I will uh, show an experiment demo uh, within this package. So as uh, Already in the first presentation, there were highlighted some motivations. I will just pass uh, quickly through these uh, uh, possible scenarios, which may include a digital twin in an industry 4.0 context, or an augmented assembly line uh, used uh, with uh, these kind of AR devices, or even production process control, or lately, which came quite popular in the last time, the augmented technical training or remote assistance. 
So these are some of the keywords, possible use cases that uh, these IR related packages might be related to. Our main idea was to make a direct connection between the ROS and IR for the Android devices. Why? Because uh, it seemed that this is the way to go in the uh, near future in terms of portability, uh, mainly for uh, smart glasses and mobile devices. Uh, I see this uh, prediction in the context that we had quite some uh, industrial related uh, projects, including HoloLens, Google Tango, or iCore as well. And it seemed to be that uh, each of them had uh, their limitation. For instance, with the HoloLens, we faced uh, several issues uh, with the integration within the ROS, even though there were some preliminary .NET related uh, proper packages. And later on, with the uh, uh, World Tango, we faced that, okay, it was just discontinued a few years before. And uh, finally, with the R core, we managed to make some uh, applications which were a bit um, hard to translate into ROS. So this is why we thought that it would be high time to go forward and uh, make a step towards these uh, more generic Android related devices. At that time, we found also some initiatives within the Rosin Consortium towards the R related projects. So mainly uh, the RVs at that time and rolled ARVs to uh, AR, which were uh, focusing on uh, Unity and UVP based uh, solutions, mainly for HMDs, for instance, HoloLens. And then we proposed uh, another branch, mainly for ROS, ROS and ROS2 adapters, uh, which can use Android and Google for instance, uh, for this augmented reality visualization part. So this was the main difference between uh, our approach based on uh, Android devices combined with Vuforia library and the rest of the existing approaches within the ROSIM, focusing mainly on uh, Unity and uh, HoloLens. The main advantage of our approach is that uh, it's a generic one, so it can be easily translated, uh, built on a see-through device and on a uh, Android uh, tablet or phone as well. The main components of our approach are presented in the right-hand side of this uh, slide. So basically, you can see here uh, the visualization device, the uh, tablet or the C2 device, okay? Such as this uh, Epsom Radio uh, smart glass that we use in our testings. We have the Android uh, components as well as the uh, freely available Vuforia library parts. And we made a wrapper uh, for the uh, Rose Bridge uh, in order to connect to uh, ROS PC, which is connected to a, a generic robot. So uh, for the robot, we were focusing on three different types of um, devices. We included the uh, uh, 6DOF robotic arm, uh, Skitsier uh, mobile robot, and uh, UAV. Just to highlight that our solution is generic enough in order to visualize uh, relevant information about a uh, robot, into, such as uh, the running topics versus the required uh, topics, as well as the uh, position in the space of the robot or other customer defined uh, properties. Here now we will see in more details the components. First, uh, we have the ROS part. As I mentioned earlier, we were able to uh, integrate and visualize the 
required node list. This is important because imagine in a larger um, application, you have several nodes that should be running on a robot. And sometimes some of them might uh, just be blocked or um, okay, unavailable. And it's important for a user, especially who is not familiar to the R ROS nodes and um, all the uh, details behind uh, uh, this uh, ROS component, what is fine or what, what is broken on that robot. So it's really important to have a list of the required nodes and services and to visualize those ones who are running and those ones who are um, uh, in a block state. We did this similar approach for the topics as well as for the topic data field, but our starting point was focusing on the required node list and service list, which uh, uh, we parse in an automatic way from the ROS launch files. So basically a user can attach this visualization um, tool to a generic ROS package and our parser, basically we parse the required node lists and service lists in a recursive way. Yeah, so if we go in each launch file and the included launch file as well, and you pass the required nodes. On the Android side, we <clears throat> use the um, recognition parts from the Euphoria just to recognize two d or three targets. 2D targets are easy, just if you have a photo or a simple recording from your robot, then you can use it as a, a target as a, 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 for recognition. Uh, but you can also go for a 3D reconstruction, partial reconstruction of your robot, and you can use that as a model uh, for uh, recognition, meaning that you can recognize your robot from uh, the arbitrary position. At the config side, we included um, a JSON file with the IP address and ports uh, through which the Android device can connect to the PC. And the rest, uh, basically, it's uh, simple UI uh, using the Euphoria uh, libs available, uh, freely available libraries uh, for the Android. As I mentioned earlier, we use the web services via the ROS Android page. So basically, we are using uh, this ROS Android bridge to get data feed from the ROS ecosystem. Here is a um, simple demo for the Euphoria-related 2D and 3D object recognition. As I mentioned earlier, you can opt for the 2D, just a simple image, OK? just make a capture from your robot, or you can use the 3D uh, training, okay, via some uh, landmarks on the printed uh, special landmark to reconstruct or uh, model of robot. Basically, you just uh, compose a set of key points in, in, in from 2D images, and we have these key point feature descriptors, you will have a sort of uh, 3D reconstruction from your model. This can be stored in an online offline uh, repo, which can be late, later on used uh, for uh, recognition purposes. All these details are uh, mentioned and uh, described in the readme file of uh, our package. Here now you see in action that is recognized the drone. And now we will see a demo where we will also uh, show how to start in first phase this package. So it's basically using only the ROS launch info to get the list of the required nodes or uh, services. And later on, uh, the user should only uh, specify the IP and the port of the PC from where uh, to connect uh, to the PC running with uh, ROS. And here you have a demo with three different types of robots. In our experiments, we use the 
just to show the generic uh, usability of our robot, um, mobile robots, robotic arms, and uh, drone as well. The first phase, you make this um, uh, recognition, either we are simple tag, okay, use a simple APR tag, or we are 2D recognition, or just using a, a simple uh, 3D reconstruction via this view 4 uh, scanner uh, utility. So as you can see here, you can uh, basically you can visualize different properties of a robot, including, uh, for instance, the velocity or the position of the robot, or uh, you can show the required node list that is uh, passed out from a, a launcher file. Yeah, so basically it's, uh, it has different variants how we can reuse the uh, uh, targets defined via QR codes, APTX, uh, 2D images, or 3D reconstruction of robot. Yeah. And this is a live data. Uh, you can see that this. Okay, so summing up, we propose in our ROS to IR package a generic Android based AR solution for visualizing robot properties. These robot properties can include a list of required topics, nodes, or services, or we can just uh, visualize generic data relevant to that robot speed, velocity, position, and whatever. Uh, this is available both for ROS1 and ROS2, okay? And you can access the content of this package if you go to this uh, ROS2R uh, address. If you have any question, please feel free to contact us on these uh, email addresses you see here. At this point, I would like to thank you again for the Rosin Consortium for providing us generic support developing this project. Uh, I hope that via this uh, small piece of brick, we can contribute to the uh, large uh, ROS IR uh, ecosystem. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have questions after the presentation uh, session, I am glad to answer them. Okay, yeah, thanks, uh, Levante, again, for the another interesting presentation. Um, so we are, we have one more speaker before the discussion ses session. So Francisco Martin Rico from Le Juan Carlos University. He will be presenting Arvis and mockup for ROS2. Hello. Uh, okay. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Francisco Martin. And in this talk, I want to present the FTPs that we have developed within the ROSIN project. First of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation to participate in this conference. In this talk, I'm presenting two ROSIN focus technical projects, uh, RBs and MOCA for ROS2. The first of them refers to RBs, uh, which is the widely known visualization tool in ROS. Uh, in this project, we wanted to carry out an implementation based on augmented reality with similar capability. The second project is about a motion capture system in ROS2. Uh, both projects use the la latest technologies available in ROS2 during, during its realization time. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm an associate professor at the Rey Juan Carlos University in Madrid. I lead the Robotics Intelligence Lab Research Group. Our group has great expertise in robot software development with ROS and ROS2. We advise in some European projects such as uh, Eurobench or Robmosis, and we teach ROS in several courses. This year, we carried out an educational project also in ROSIN to create a ROS teaching center in Spain. Uh, we also participate in robotics competitions at Robocup, uh, Cyrog, and European Robotics League. 
Uh, I have personally contributed to several core uh, road to packages such as Navigation 2, RCL CPP, or Behavior Trees. I am the author of some packages like Road to Planning System or Cascade Lifecycle. In this line below is my list of publications. Uh, okay. As we said in the in the first slide, we carried out our project in ROS2. The maturity of ROS2 has had a, a significant impact on the development of our uh, FTPs. The RBS project begins in September 18 and ends in September 19. Uh, this project started with Bouncy Bolson and was developed at Crystal Plains. Uh, these two distribution required compilation uh, by sources, and ROS2 uh, had not yet stabilized many of its features, taking into account that Dacin Diamata was the first version of ROS2 to be distributed in packages. Uh, the other project, the MOCA for ROS2 project, finds a much more stable scenario. This project started in November 19 and just finished, has just finished. It supports Foxy, which is the latest ROS2 distribution, and also the first with long time support. Uh, these are the main technologies used in both projects. As you can see, one of them is .NET. Our development in ROS2 around .NET has a great impact on the realization of both projects. Later, I will comment on uh, why we require this technology. Okay, uh, many of the efforts during the realization of these two uh, FTPs uh, have focused on developing the missing functionality of uh, .NET in ROS2 and updating it to the latest version of ROS2. I think we are in position to say that ROSIN has greatly contributed to the support of .NET in ROS2 uh, by these two FTPs. Uh, ROS2 design is structured in layers, as many of you probably know. Above the middleware layers, the implementation of the main ROS2 functionality is around the RCL, writing in C, to favor its portability to many platforms and operating systems. The application developer for ROS2 does not use RCL directly, but uses client libraries built on top of RCL. This design allows client to emerge for various languages without the obligation to implement ROS2 functionalities from scratch, but instead use RCL. The client library in, in its particular language mainly provides easier access to RCL, the set model, and the generation of messages. Uh, these are, uh, there are many client libraries such as RAS, Go, Java, also the officially supported ones are C++ and Python. Uh, the ROS2.NET project was created by Esteve Fernandez, a former member of the ROS team and one of the uh, ROS2 designers. When we started the RSBS project, that net was only had support in Crystal, and nested types and arrays were not implemented. Only plain messages with basic types or a string could be handled. Of course, this means that it was not possible to send a message with a simple header nor TF2 messages, which are necessary for spatial reasoning. TF2 was not yet fully supported, neither in 18, uh, due to some problems related to compiling uh, C++. The good thing about the project is that you could create a UWP 52 application, which are the ones that could be run on board the HoloLens, at least at that moment. The message creation mechanism changed dramatically from Crystal to Dacin, so the Arvis project had to be limited to Crystal. This problem was fixed at the beginning of uh, or through the mock-up for ROS2 project, and now we have almost complete support in Foxy, including testing. Okay, let's start with the description of the RBS project. Uh, the goal of RBS is to have a visualization tool similar to RBS, but using augmented reality. Uh, the main requirements that we set in this project is that it had to run on board the HoloLens. Uh, we want to design a simple interface to display maps, laser, images, and TFs, among others. For this purpose, we had to synchronize the estimated device 
device position with the coordinate system in which the robot was. We assume that the robot was locally, localized in the global frame. Um, in the so in the origin of coordinate of this frame, we put some uh, several QR or arucos, and with the HoloLens detected the QR, we synchronized both coordinate axes. Uh, we have uh, many problems during the project due to maturity of ROS2 in 18. Uh, we had to dedicate many resources to completing the .NET binding for ROS2. And it was not easy to include the ROS2 and .NET libraries uh, in Unity. Furthermore, the process was quite tedious and it was not the ROS standard in which everything was done in a workspace. Uh, it was executed in which uh, it was executed by launching nodes only. The result was not entirely satisfactory. We achieved the project's objective, but we did not achieve a replicability level to be adopted by the community. Still, we believe we have started the way for other subsequent projects. Uh, Microsoft is currently collaborating in the .NET uh, binding for ROS2, and some groups have later achieve more straightforward procedure to integrate ROS2 and Unity. Next, I'm going to show you a couple of videos. So this is the, the first design. This was the first uh, graphical user interface in which the, the HoloLens uh, detected the, um, the topics and the types and was able to display in the image. This is the map. Okay, this was the first the first version. This is the final version. Uh, this is the origin of coordinates. We have some Aruco markers to localize the, the HoloLens. That was the graphical user interface. It was like a circle without the all the topics, and you can move that circle and select the the topic we want you want to this to display to display. As you can see, it's not very usable, but okay. You can also visualize images. Okay. Uh, the next FTP that I'm going to show to present is mockup for ROS2. Um, this ITP is a consortium formed by our research group, the Technite Company and the Spanish Higher Council of Scientific Research, one of the Eurobench project coordinators. The objective of this FTP is to establish a standard for motion capture system. This system can be vision-based, like the Bicon system or OptiTrack, or based on inertial sensors. This project was born from the need to integrate various motion capture system in the Eurobench facilities. All these systems must be integrated on the, onto RUS2, the system choosing to integrate all the components. In these facilities, the Eurobench project provides 
uh, test benches for humanoids and exoskeletons. Uh, the proposal uh, of uh, mock-up for ROS2 is an architecture in three layers. The first one, the driver layers, contain nodes that directly obtain the data from the motion capture system through their SDKs. The driver for Technite, IMU, uh, is the, the SDK, the, this SDK is available only in CSAR, so we have to use the binding for .NET in ROS2. The driver data is published then in a standard message that all the drivers of the same time uh, must comply with. The vision-based system, uh, such as Bicon, OptiTrack, or Qualysys, must provide their information in the same format. The composer layer contains nodes that receive information from each driver and combine it. The result of the node in this layer is a set of related reference access that represent the market detected by the motion capture system. The application layer uses this transform mainly. Here uh, are the representation, registration, and evaluation application that use the, di the data from motion capture system. The idea is that a developer can make an application that can be used uh, by a, any motion capture system. Uh, we have promoted the use of this project in the ROS community. The quality driver has been a contribution from an external developer to the project. Um, the dissemination objective was to establish to establish a debate on the formats and procedures of this standard. We want to continue promoting a standardization discussion around this project. Uh, we have carried out me uh, measurements within this project to check the flow and bandwidth requirement by motion capture system, and we've com we have compared um, various DDS vendors, quality of service, and transmission media to justify our decisions. Uh, the project has just been successfully finished. It works on ROS2 Foxy and three motion capture motion uh, system are working. Uh, next week, we meet uh, with the European, with the Eurobed project coordinator to finalize uh, what application and protocol will be needed to use it within this project. Um, that's it. I hope you have found interesting these FTPs in which my group has been involved these two years. Um, any question are welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Francisco. You really uh, showed uh, cool demos. And I think we are just on time for the presentations. Now we can continue with the discussion session. Um, so let's check the questions that we have. Uh, for Darko, uh, do you know if TurtleBot 2 uh, will be supported in VBots in ROS2? I think you already have some explanations. Can you also do um, it verbally? Yes. Um, so we don't plan to uh, make a um, um, VBots model for the robot, uh, but if there is UDF uh, model, then you can easily convert to VBots using our conversion tool. I put a link uh, in the chat and then you just follow our VBots ROS2 integration tutorial and you should be um, fine. You should have um, a robot, uh, robot with the ROS2 interface. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the answer. Uh, I think from the audience, we don't have any other questions. I would like to ask uh, one question for Raphael. Um, so how can a user introduce his uh, own application model for using the uh, that laser projector? Do you think it is an easy process uh, to create a model for uh, the custom applications? It was um, a hard job at the beginning because we need to understand how the SDK of the manufacturer uh, worked. And once we understood uh, how it worked, uh, we began to develop the functionalities in uh, 
by great by our API. Okay, yeah, thanks. Also, uh, one question for Clemente. I would like to ask, uh, can you give an application area or use case for using your work in industrial robots? Yeah, uh, basically our main idea started from uh, industrial collaboration, where we had a robot for which we were interested to see from a user perspective point of view, what is happening. Okay, so think about um, a remote operator or think about uh, uh, just a, a, a coworker who is not that familiar with iOS. And if you want to just visualize what is happening around, then this is a good, good, uh, good opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks. Right. And uh, for the Francisco, I would like to ask, uh, you introduced two different projects. Are you already using both ARVs and uh, mockup for ROS2 in an application or do you plan to use them in the future? or they are completely different projects. Uh, what what we are using? What are you? Uh, you introduced uh, two different projects. Ah, I .NET, was... you say. Yes. Yes, we are using .NET. Uh, RB is uh, finished, but now in Mocha for Rolls2, uh, we are, we continue using these bindings, bindings uh, for for the EMU sensor of Technai that uh, they have the, the SDK only in C Sharp. So we continue working with that, and probably in the in next project uh, we will use it. Microsoft is right now doing pull requests in the repo, so I think we will continue working on that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, also, last question for Darko. Uh, so, what what are the main reasons that you use uh, EPAC robots for this project instead of other variations? Um, so EPAC is designed to be educational robot and for research purposes, mainly for like uh, uh, collaborative robotics. Mm -hmm. But in this particular project, we used it uh, to verify um, our ROSTO interface and to verify our simulation. So, but yes, uh, ROSTO driver for EPAC robot is now publicly available and you can uh, Download it, install it, and use it. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, so that's all from my side. I wonder if any uh, anyone else wants to make some comments or ask questions. Otherwise, uh, we still have time, so please uh, feel free to ask or discuss any topic you want to. I don't see any other questions from, ah, okay. Maybe I should also talk a bit about polls that we created. Um, so yeah, there are one question. Do you plan to use ROS with a visualization tool? So almost uh, all attendees attend uh, selected yes, like 97% uh, is yes. And for the second question, which visualization tools are you using? The question was, and uh, this is actually main understand uh, how familiar the people are listening, listening uh, these presentations uh, with the uh, presented uh, projects. So we see that 29% reports are used and yeah, most of the people are uh, 43 person are using other visualization tools currently. Maybe after this uh, session, they will decide to try the others also. Um, okay, I think we are done. Uh, we still have time, but maybe a bit time for a coffee break after before the next session. So. I would like to again thank all the speakers for this session. Yeah, that was really uh, interesting uh, projects that you introduced. Yeah, thanks all for 
uh, your contributions and also thanks to all people who are listening to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank you. for the opportunity. Nice to meet you.